old stoves, if you notice, have a three-wire receptacle with this third prong doing the job of the ground and the neutral. Is that a sign that back in the day they didn't really understand safety? Or is this proof of the NEC's contribution to winning World War II? Let's get into it. Anyone who follows my channel knows I've been doing a lot of videos on old stoves sharing the neutral and ground as one conductor. I also posted that on my YouTube channel. And this guy commented on my YouTube page with a ton of information. Ton. About when, why there would be imbalances, when there was 120, when there wasn't. All kinds of great stuff. But for this video, what I'm concerned about is the claim he makes here that it was a code violation to share them as one wire prior to 1942. That back then they knew it wasn't okay. But 1942, because of the materials shortage during that time, they changed the code to make us only have to run one wire for both the neutral and ground. If he's correct that it was a code violation in 1940, and then in 1942 they made a change, it would be really cool if we knew somebody that had a collection of old code books that could see what the code was before and after 1942. I have the 1940 and the 1947. Let's see what it says. Now, it went back to a code violation in the 1996 book. So the last time it was allowed was 93. And if you look, it's 250.60. Oh, right there. 250.60 is what allows you to do it. So let's go back and look at the 250.60s through the other old code books. This is my 1968 handbook. It's an electric, electrical code handbook in 250.60 again. And here they give you the reason. The reason they thought it was okay is because the wire was so big it was unlikely to be broken. And as long as it's not broken, objectionable current's not a shock hazard. And now, all the way back to 1947. It's still 250, but they didn't do the dash. So if we look, 250.58, 250.59, 250, 60, right here. This is 1947. The frames of ranges shall be grounded any means necessary, blah, 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 or may be grounded by a connection to the grounded conductors. All right, that's 1947. Let's see if we can find 250, 60 in 1940. So here's the 250, 252, and then we have 250, 59, and when we turn one page, it jumps to 71. There is no 250, 60. So that definitely backs up his claim that there was a giant change from 1940 to 1947, and there might be a code in between. But just like all codes, you have to read about special permissions in 25056 subparagraph. And then 25056, fixed electrical equipment, tells you all the ways you can do it, A, B, and then C. C is what concerns us. Look at those fine words right under it. For the purposes of this rule, electric ranges are considered as fixed equipment, even though they have flexible cords. So, it sounds like to me, I can pause it, you guys can read it yourself. It sounds like to me that in the 1940 code, it was allowed with special permissions. But in the 1947 code, it was just allowed all the time. And then it was allowed all the time through all these codes up until 1993, and then in 1996, it became a code violation, if I understand correctly, a code violation except for existing locations. All right. So I think the guy's information in that comment is pretty much verified. I mean, I don't have a more valid source than the code, but maybe you guys have some news article or some magazine from the time frame that explains it better. Or maybe if somebody has a 1942 interim code, I'd probably be interested in buying it. All right, thank you very much. For something weird, I actually filmed this video while on a live. So these followers and these guys got to see the behind the scenes. I don't know if they're interested in it or not, but something I wanted to try. Thank you very much.